have to fall down. People go, that guy just got killed. And it's like, no, I'm fine. I don't care how hurt you are, you don't talk about it. Nothing's going to stop me from doing stunts. I just love this business so much. Hi, I'm Steve Hart. I'm the stunt coordinator on Reno 911. And uh, we're doing some stuff today. This thing hasn't been done before, as far as we know, as far as stunt work goes. This is Dangle's character, who's uh, the guy in the shorts, all that stuff. And he always loses his bicycle, or his bicycle is stolen, time and time again. Do you see somebody with a bicycle? A guy with a bike? Somebody, anybody with a bicycle? Says police on it? Oh, son of a bitch. And he's found, he's found his bicycle, he thinks. And he says, he's getting close, he's getting close, and he jumps out into the road, turns around, and he's hit by a truck. Well, we can't hit a truck, or we can't hit a guy with a truck. It's just, as you can see, flat nose. There's no place for our stunt guy to go. So what we came up with is we came up with a catcher to catch our stuntman. Um, right now we've minimized the danger, but I mean, you know, anything can happen. Kim can step out, uh, you know, be in a wrong position. I can have a bogey come out. There's a million things that can happen. Kim can run an arm through there and, 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 uh, and tweak himself. Every stunt is dangerous. Anything can happen. It's not, it's not about how easy it can look. It's all about the fact that there's a truck, okay? It's like being set on fire. It's not about how small a fire is, it's the fact it's fire. Again, and I know he's really close, he's really, really close. He's really, really close, I know it. I can feel it, son of a bitch, I can feel him. I know he's close, I know he's close. I know he's close, I know he's close, and... Actually, it never occurred to me to be a stuntman. I, I came to California to be an actor, and I am still an actor. Uh, and then I just happened to see in the paper an audition for the Wild West Stunt Show at Universal Studios Hollywood. So I went and auditioned, and I got hired. I wanted to be a stuntman since I was uh, a little kid watching Clint Eastwood on Rawhide. I always wanted to jump off stuff, and I always wanted to be the best at everything. It kind of took me for a surprise. I didn't realize I was going to become a stunt woman. Originally, I had a karate school it's called a dojo over in La Costa, California, San Diego County. And um, actually, that opened the doors to the industry for me. I went through the usual uh, processes of I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to, I, I grew up around rodeos, so I wanted to, you know, be a, in the rodeo. But I just, I, I kept. Um, gravitating towards doing stunts. I, I did, when I did my first stunt, I watched my dad, watching his friends, and, and just when they trained, I would train and you know, do things. And, and it, it, just, it just seemed to me the, the thing that I knew the best. Being a stunt woman is a little bit challenging for my family, I think, especially for my father. He's Japanese, and of course, he would like me to settle down, be married, and have a family of my own, but I think I kind of take after him, and um, my life is definitely a little bit challenging for him to be able to cope with, but he does support me because he sees that I'm happy with it. They all worry too much, you know, and, and I worry, and if you're doing something big, um, you know, my mind is on the, the gag, you know, my mind is on the stunt, and I don't... I would rather not have outside distractions like that, like somebody else worrying about me, you know? I might mention it depending on how I feel, but generally I won't. I tend to not tell him what I'm doing until after the fact. Once I know that everything was good and I had a lot of fun and I'm safe, I'm healthy, then I'll tell him. I'll tell him afterwards so he knows I'm okay. <laughs> then he tells me I have rocks on my head and that I'm a knucklehead. <laughs> my wife, we weren't married yet, but we were dating. Uh, she, she never really came out to the set. One day we were, work, we were shooting locally and uh, I was doing a high fall and it was through a window, glass building. 
uh, from the sixth floor. So I do the high fall through the window, hit the airbag, piece of the glass comes down, hits me in the forehead, and I come out of the airbag just bloodied. And I mean, I have a pretty good gash that starts in the center of my forehead and goes up through to the top of my head. It was my only ambulance trip ever I've ever taken. They took me to the hospital, stitch up my head, stitch up my hand because I had torn it open too. And she drove me home that night. And I remember she was so brave the entire time and just, you know, was holding my hand and stuff like that. And she was just right there standing by my side. And as soon as we got out of the hospital, she got in the car, she started crying. Being a stuntman is a humbling experience sometimes. Sometimes very, um, you get a lot of glory from it. People clap for you and they all see you and do great stuff. But it's humbling insofar as you have to fall down. And um, there's a lot of pain involved in that. And um, the, the classic stuntman ethic is don't show your pain. Good oh, job, Greg. You right? Yeah. Ah. I fell about 18 feet. Not onto the concrete, thank God, but onto uh, like a hard packed dirt like surface. And I cracked some ribs and I bruised my kidneys, my lungs, and my heart. Uh, I was urinating blood. Uh, I was spitting up blood from my lungs. And I was, uh, I, there was blood around my heart from uh, my pericardium popped. I've known. Over the years, especially growing up in this, in this industry, you know, uh, I've known a lot of people who have passed away and been killed doing stunts. Um, it's it's a rare occurrence, thank God, and it goes back to why I say we're, you know, we're really more we're not crazy, we're calculated risk takers. Um, you know, high falls for some reason have killed most. Um, going back, you know, to uh, back in the '70s, late '70s, uh, a man by the name of A.J. Bakunas trying for a world record high fall, got killed, went through the airbag, 330 feet. Uh, shortly thereafter, another man um, got killed because he underjumped. Uh, his name was Jack Tyree, um, got killed because he didn't make it far enough. He thought he could make the airbag jumping out over this ledge. He didn't make it. Uh, Jay Curran got killed doing the same thing. Um, and uh, more, I think more recently, uh, Paul Dallas, who was uh, uh, not that recently, it was about 10 years ago still, but um, yeah, he was killed going over a railing and he thought one thing and it didn't work out that way. I was there that night and uh, I, uh, I was doubling an actor and they wanted me to do the high fall and I told them I couldn't do it because it was over a railing and I'm not a high fall specialist. And the guy who did the high fall was a high fall specialist and he died. So it really makes you think about mortality because first of all I was smart enough to say I couldn't do it because that could have been me. Sadly it was somebody else. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing, you know, but you got to put it behind you and move on. And the Taurus Award goes to Gregory James Fitzpatrick, Starsky and Hush. Holy smokes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really uh, overwhelmed and uh, so grateful that uh, there's a man here upside down. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody likes a pat on their back. Uh, in their work. Everybody likes to know they did a good job. So uh, I like when people tell me you did a good job. I like when my bosses tell me you did a good job. I like when the actor I'm doubling tells me, thank you, you did a good job. Recognition for me of doing stunt work is, is it's really cool to go to a movie theater and have people see what you just did, or not just did, but they see what your stunt was and you have the crowd go, oh, jeez, or wow, awesome, you know? So that's, that's pretty much enough recognition. Just being appreciated, and that's rewarding. Just being there is rewarding to me. Just the experience, and like I said, I, I feel good with being on the set, the people and everything, the friendships. That's rewarding to me. I, I still feel really good about just getting the pat on the back and, and getting paid for a job that I love to do.